If you look down in the description box, you'll see my most recent edition of my 2014 NFL mock draft. You're probably going to get two more of them before next week's draft actually begins. So, you know, this isn't my final one, so don't go too hard in on me, needless to say. This whole shit of waiting until May for the NFL draft is for the birds. Up yours, Roger Goodell. How dare you make us wait <laughs> this long? This is ridiculous. So, again... My two-round mock draft this time around <clears throat> is in the description box down below. Like I said, you'll probably get one more this upcoming weekend and then another one on Wednesday before the NFL draft. Also, I will be doing a special two-hour NFL draft preview podcast next Wednesday on Blog Talk Radio. That information will be in the description box down below. Now, some of the things you will notice in my mock draft here, not only is it two rounds, but you see trades in the first round, a total of nine of them. Now, some people would probably sit there and say, why would you have so many trades in a draft that is so deep and so talented, especially early on? Well, I'll, I'll explain my rationale and reasoning for this. Is because let's say you have a guy that you have graded as a top five talent, and he drops, let's say, to number six or number seven. You didn't think he was maybe going to get there, but you see him here, and maybe you're at pick 9 or pick 10. Like, look at, for example, Jake Matthews going to Buffalo at 6. When you look at that, maybe Buffalo had him graded as a top 5 talent. They're at pick 9. They envisioned no way of him getting there. But all of a sudden, he gets to number 6. Are you really going to allow Jake Matthews to go three picks before you if that's your guy, especially knowing that it would probably only cost you a third or fourth round pick to move up three spots to get your guy. You know, in a lot of cases, when you look at these trades, it's a combination of having the right teams that want to trade down with the right teams that want to trade up with the right scenarios and situations that play out. And every year in the draft, regardless of what you believe, um, and regardless of the logic there may be, there are all types of trades that take place in the first round, usually somewhere between 7 to 10 or 11 of them. And I don't anticipate this year being any different. Now, you'll notice I finally put Jadavion Clowney as the number one overall choice to the Houston Texans. While I don't fully agree with it, and I don't fully agree with the logic and the rationale for it, I will say this, is that when you look at my mock and you see that the Houston Texans come right back around in the first pick around round two and get what I feel is a top five talent in this draft, the best quarterback in this draft, which is Teddy Bridgewater out of Louisville, you're talking about a scenario before this past college football season the two guys that were expected to battle it out for that number one overall spot would be Jadavion Clowney and Teddy Bridgewater. Now in my mock draft, you've got the potential to get both of those guys in the same draft, one with the number one overall pick and one with the first pick of the second round. If you're the Houston Texans, you'd absolutely love that scenario to take place, I would think anyways, I would think. And it would be really hard for me to knock them taking a Jadavion Clowney number one overall, even though I don't feel he's the best defensive prospect in this draft, if they were able to turn around in round two and get to me what is the best quarterback prospect in this draft. And that would be a hell of a draft there. Now you look at some of the other things, and I'll just kind of pull up my sheet here so I kind of have my point of reference. I do anticipate at this point in time, I really do, that the top four players in some particular order more likely than not will be Jadavion Clowney, Sammy Watkins, Khalil Mack, or Greg Robinson. I think those would be the top four guys, at least at this moment. But I could see a scenario where either Bortles or Carr went to somebody like Cleveland at number four. Or maybe a Minnesota would move up the board a few spots to get him, even though I have him falling to Minnesota today here in terms of Blake Bortles. I think you're going to see some surprises potentially in the quarterbacks in terms of all the talk of quarterbacks dropping. Maybe the quarterbacks don't drop after all. Or you will see the exact opposite. People think the quarterbacks are going to drop and maybe – Outside of Blake Bortles, people are surprised with how far those quarterbacks uh, drop down in the draft. You'll see that I have Johnny Manziel going 16 to the Dallas Cowboys. Like I said, this is a mock draft. This is a what-if scenario. But I would have to imagine the Dallas Cowboys sitting there at pick 16 if Johnny Manziel was on the board. Jerry Jones would have to get a chubber. You would think about the thought of Johnny Football playing in the the shrine of Jerry, Cowboys Stadium, for the next decade plus as a starting quarterback of the Dallas, Dallas Cowboys. It would bring a renewed interest in the Cowboys. It would make the Cowboys the center of the football universe, if you would. I'm just saying. I would expect a lot of the wide receivers to go early in this draft. 
six, maybe seven of them going in round one. Most surprising might be Cody Latimer out of Indiana. I feel he's a third or fourth round prospect. However, I know that every time at this time of year, certain teams look at certain prospects and they fall in love with what they see at the combine and what they see at the pro days. And then they go back and they watch the film and they sit there and try to justify what they've seen on the combine and the pro days. And a guy like Cody Latimer, who's about six foot two, 210 pounds and has a 4440, somebody could take a chance on him late in round one, and a team like New Orleans, who does need help at wide receiver, could definitely be uh, that team, and he would actually fit what they do quite a bit. You'll see somebody like an Odell Beckham going 19 to Miami. You'll see Cooks going maybe 21 to Carolina via trade-up, or 22 would probably be as low as he would go to Philadelphia. Um, now, in terms of other things that you'll notice in my mock draft, you'll see Mike Evans as a top five pick. I'm going to tell you this right now. A lot of people that sit there and say that Sammy Watkins is so clear ahead of everybody else, that's just simply not the case. I don't even think Sammy Watkins and Odell Beckham are that far apart, let alone a Mike Evans. In fact, I guarantee you that a good number of teams have Mike Evans rated on their draft board higher than Sammy Watkins because because they might prefer a bigger, more physical weapon at wide receiver as opposed to a Sammy Watkins. Uh, this is a good draft, again, I emphasize, and you'll see my two rounds in the description box down below. Some of the best prospects that drop to round number two would be obviously Teddy Bridgewater, Xavier Suofilo, easy for me to say, the offensive guard. Uh, I would also say Coney Ely, Jason Morrow, Stefan Tuitt, Kelvin Benjamin, um, a guy like Timmy Jernigan, Jason Barrett. These are some guys that are going to drop because of the process, I feel, and because of teams going after other players at other positions. I wouldn't be surprised to see most of these guys make it to round two, and some of them prove out to be really big bargains and really big draft day steals. So again, you can check out my two-round mock draft in the description box down below. Next Wednesday, again, on Blog Talk Radio, the link will be in the description box. I will do a NFL draft preview podcast, two hours of NFL draft talk. Outstanding, isn't it? It is indeed. And like I said, you're probably going to get two more mock drafts, one more maybe either on Saturday or Sunday of this week, and then one more on the Wednesday before the draft. Feel free to let me know what you think of my mock draft down below, and make sure you check out that uh, podcast on Blog Talk Radio next week.